Hello, my name is Karx82, and welcome back to my Greg Block series. Today I am just looking at some of my quests here. I think I'm probably going to be getting into some HV stuff here. <clears throat> Done a pretty good foray into MV. We still got a couple little uh, quests less, like this implosion uh, compressor. I'm not going to get into that quite yet, though. Uh, there is this optional multi-smelter I might do, large steel boiler, possibly if I want to get into some high production of steam. And then there's like an advanced brewery and then some better circuit boards, but I'm probably not going to get into that yet. And I also need to start working towards this for some more advanced stuff, but probably not yet. So this advanced autoclave, advanced fluid extractor and stuff. But today I'm going to start with the HV machine hole, which is the basis for all the HV machines. And then we did this before in another episode, getting stainless steel. We haven't finished it yet, so let's go ahead and finish the machine hole. Now I already got a bunch of materials for quite a few things here. Just going to throw all it in here. So the Machine hull, HV machine hull. Alright, so this one is the usual stainless steel, so let's do that. And you get the machine casing, and then what I have been doing to make the machine holes is doing the, the wrought iron plates and then the extra stainless steel and then two cables. There is actually an easier way to do this, and it requires one less uh, stainless steel. So you use the machine casing, two gold cables, which is the same, but and then molten polyethylene. I believe this is empty. Yep. So I'm going to throw my two polyethylene sheets in here. Those will melt down. Go in there and then we'll throw the what was it? two and then the machine casing and there we go. So almost the same, you just basically save on one uh, stainless steel and stainless steel is not difficult to make but not the fastest. So HV, that just opened up a whole bunch of stuff. Now I actually did make an HV Piston, because I was going for an HV machine, and that is going to be the uh, HV macerator, or the universal macerator is actually called. So I have most of these. I have the circuits. The only thing I haven't done is this diamond grinding head. I haven't done this yet, but it's just steel, four diamond dust, and then one diamond in the middle. Super easy to make, especially with all the materials, free materials we get. And that should be enough for this HV Universal Macerator. So that is right there. Now the reason I wanted to make this is because if you look at a bunch of recipes, um, I'm trying to remember which one, do ruby ore because this is the main reason I wanted to do it. So to get ruby ore or chrome, basically you can either smelt this, get ruby dust, macerate that down, and get ruby dust that way, or you can pulverize it. Now the pulverizer shows it has extra outputs here. But so if I may straight ruby ore, I have a I'll get two crushed ruby ore and then a ten percent chance of getting chrome dust, which is the chrome is what I need. It's not a huge um, chance; it's only ten percent. But chrome is not the easiest thing to obtain, so I definitely want every chance I get to get chrome. So what I'm planning on doing is pulverizing the ruby ore down, and then I can also, if I wanted to. Which I probably will, I believe, 
is thermal centrifuge the ruby ore and I'll be able to get a tiny pile of chrome dust. So I can also get it from there. So I have a 10% chance of getting a full one and then every single time I centrifuge this ruby, ruby ore I'll get a tiny pile. So nine of these I will get another chrome. And then when this I will throw it in a, I can actually, if I wanted to, I could pulverize this again and then get a 10% chance of red garnet dust, which I don't really think this has much of a, yeah, 16 red garnet dust gets used, especially to obtain almondine, but this stuff is so easy to obtain from sifting. And then there's the red garnets, but I don't think I need to do that. So, yeah, so I'll probably make a thermal centrifuge. I haven't gotten it yet. Really no need yet. But now that I'm using, trying to get harder to obtain materials, I'm probably going to get it. So I'll get the centrifuge ore, then I'll just throw that in a forge hammer to get the ruby dust. And then the ruby dust I can throw in a electrolyzer, and I'll get, for every six, I'll get one chrome. So basically just trying to process this as much as I can to get as much chrome as I want. Now, the other thing I'm going to be doing is my usual, since this is going to be running on uh, HV power, what I'm, which I believe is, let me look at this again, 12 EU per tick, and I believe that's going to be the lowest, like in the LV tier, if I macerate it, it uses 12 LV per tick. Now, if I put it in an MV pulverizer, or Mafesurator, I'll use four times that, or 48 EU per tick. And if I throw it in the HV, it'll be four times that, which would be 196 EU per tick, I think. I believe that is how that works. So four times the power, half the, the speed. So medium would be five seconds, 40 EU per tick, and then a HV would be 196 EU per tick, and then uh, 1.25 seconds. Craft. I don't, I'm guessing, I believe that's how it works, but I'm not entirely sure. But in order to use the 1NA2, I'm not making HP power. I'm only, I have 128 from this and 128 from this. Clean up my batteries. I cooked a bunch of stainless steel, that's why these are low. I have this paused right now. Uh, so it is paused while I'm building my buffers back up because I'm not doing enough to have this running continuously and all the other machines that I have running. So I just cook a bunch of stainless steel and then I'll pause it while these fill up. But what I want to get is the HV battery buffer for this one. And I'm going to use my usual 16. I like the 16 slots so I can have as many batteries in there as possible. Now I have the HV machine hill finally. I need the gold wires, which I actually do have. Four of those, and that should be enough for the 16 slot battery buffer. Oh, that's right. I used the. I used that for the pulverizer. So let's. And what was it? Two gold and then the two polyethylene in the fluid extractor. All right, and that will make that. So there's my HV machine hull, and then I can throw the HV machine hull like that, and that will get me this. Now I have moved this a little bit. This is going to be completely temporary. And this is very dangerous, putting this next to MV machines. So I don't advise doing this right here. This is totally temporary for me. I'm going to I'm going to have the power going out the bottom. I'm going to have the cables coming out the bottom. And then I'm going to have... Just for now, temporary, just uh, 
I'm going to put some HV batteries in here. Now eventually I want this to be feeding into the medium voltage battery buffer. Like I'll have, like what I've done here, I have the medium voltage, and then I have a line going off the medium voltage, and then I have it also feeding into the LV. And then eventually I'll have the same with the HV. A branch off the HV line and then part of it feeding into the medium voltage battery buffer. But for now, this episode, I'm just going to put this right here. And uh, it's fine for now, but if I accidentally, which I'm not going to do, like face this towards this machine with batteries in this, these machines will explode because I'll be feeding them HV power. Um, so, like I said, I definitely advise against doing it this way. Just for now, I'm placing it right here. But to get these batteries, I need HV batteries here. And these are not cheap. These HV batteries require four gold cables, nine battery alloy plates, and nine polyethylene. So that is going to require nine polyethylene in this assembly machine here, then nine, and then I needed four each, and I have enough for 12. And then these in the candy machine. require 32 lithium dust, so this is a pretty serious investment here. I only have enough lithium for three batteries. Now while that is melting down, there it goes, it's making one of them. Over here I've just been having my uh, processing the polyethylene. I have about 60 right now, so I'm pretty good. Um, if I wanted to, I could probably turn this on, maybe. You just, I'll empty it once. How about? So, I'll let this fill up to 16. But I don't remember how much that's going to get. So, this is just doing the light crack fuel. And then, what is it? It's like remember. It's two, I guess. I guess. I can't remember. But anyway, so I'll just have, like, every once in a while, I'll let that auto up with the 16 buckets, and then I'll get how many polyethylene sheets I need on demand. All right, so this is taking a whole heck of a lot of time. <laughs> While that is working, I'm going to just kind of Build this out for now. Now, these cables actually I want another color here. And the spray can, how do I get that? Using the assembler. So it's two tin and a redstone. That's easy. So I want to get another, another tin here. And I can, I'll probably do yellow. I have yellow dye somewhere around. Where sure that's going. How long is this? Uh, 160 seconds, almost three minutes. Let me grab some yellow. Over here in my plant stuff. Now this, I think, pulverize it? No. All right, extractor. That's not the fastest thing either. <laughs> yeah, this is the problem with the low LV machines. They are quite slow. All right, so there's that. Let me really quickly just make that. Or not so quickly. And then this dandelion yellow, I need to extract it again. That one's quicker. So there is our yellow dye. 
No, I don't have any red dye over here. Alright, come on assembly machine. <laughs> I'm also making annealed copper. I have it paused right now because I was running low on power. Um, but to get annealed copper, you can either throw copper ingots with oxygen in the blast furnace or throw copper plates with oxygen in this arc furnace and get annealed copper ingots. I just have this paused now. Alright, so there's my spray can. Is it in an assembly machine that I do this? I can't remember. Yeah. So there is my yellow spray can. I'll put this stuff back in. I have a feeling this is going to take a while too. Yeah. So that is filling that up. Anyway, while that is working over here, it's going to. I did electrum cables here. Look up the cables really quick. So these are the options for HV cables. You can use a higher tier as well if you want. Um, I'll probably do titanium in the future when I have a better supply of it. But for right now, I have gold cables, which aren't too bad. Daytime gold is um, a pretty good one, since I want 16 eventually, 16 amps in this cable. So 8 times gold would be good. Electrum, which is also pretty good. You get 24 amps with 8 electrum. Silver which you only get one loss per block. This is loss two, this is loss two. You only get one off this, but I do need to use 16 cables, whereas this is half. Or we have Canthal, which is even better uh, with the amount that you need. I could only, I could do four Canthal cables, which would be two ingots, and I would get 16 amps. Whereas, the gold I would need eight. This can I can actually only use four if I wanted with this, but you do get a little bit more loss per block. But right now I decided to go with electrum. So eight times electrum because one actual two electron ingots is one gold and one silver together. So it's just kind of easier. I find electrum is a little easier to go for over silver and gold because you can just mix them together. So I'm gonna go eight times electrum is kind of what. I did, and then I made a bunch of rubber, cover them up. Um, how do I want to do this? This is all going to be temporary. Now I got to be careful what's going on underneath. So nothing is going to connect. I don't want it to. Um. You know, just for now, I haven't decided how I want this all set up yet. But this is going to be HV line. So let me just paint all that so I don't get confused at what current is going through here. Because as you can see, it starts getting really confusing when you have... Right, if I look down here... I have MV cables, HV cables, LV cables, all within each other. So best to, uh, I find it's good to paint them so you're not completely lost. All right, so I'll put that there. So now, it completes. Part of a quest here, uh, HV battery buffer. All right, it looks like completing the 16 slot one actually completed this quest as well. So that's good. I don't have to actually make the the one slot one. I'm going to put this AV macerator right here. And then, in theory, I'm really worried here. Let's just double check this is facing down. Is I can put one battery buff battery in here, and hopefully nothing explodes and I die. 
All right, now that is filling this up. Battery buffer there. And now that is filling this up from here. Yep, now this is, I'm just not making enough power, really. So that's why I am just going to do one or two batteries in here for now. So I can throw that in there. Now, not sure. Let's grab some ruby ore here. Ruby ore was over here. Right here. Let's just do. I'll grab 10. It's 10% 10 chance for chrome. I'll grab 10. Now, this is probably not going to be able to run very much here. Because I only have 148. So let's see what this recipe pulverizer uses 24, 2400 U. So times 4 times 4. Curious what that. See what that is. That is 38,400. Curious if I could stop this from receiving. I can't really. For now, actually, let's just. I can't get in there. No. I don't. I just didn't want it to despawn while I was doing other stuff. All right. So this is no longer receiving energy. So twenty three six one six. I want to see how much this like one process. So, yeah, 23616. Now I'm going to throw one ruby ore in here and see what happens. Now, that did look like I didn't see how fast that was. I didn't time it, but it did crush, and I actually got a chrome out of it. So that is good. Now let's see what is left in this. It only used about um, one sec, twenty-two. Uh, it only used nine thousand seven hundred twenty-eight. So maybe it's only overclocked once, because I feel like isn't that the one time? If it's twenty-four hundred. Twenty four hundred times four is about ninety six hundred. Yeah, I think this only used four times as much. So I don't think it used under ninety six E per tick. I'm not sure though. Let me paint that back. Let's see. Okay, it is getting enough power. And that is actually still filling up. Uh, it's slowing. It's draining a bit. So it is probably using 196 U per tick. I'm guessing. I'm really bad about figuring out how much this is. Because I'm assuming this is getting just about 228. It's only drawing one amp. Or is it two? I can't remember. The batteries might pull two amps to fill up with power, but they only. I put out one, they might accept two. I'm not sure though. Anyway. So yeah, so 10 ore, I got 7 chrome dust. I feel like that's a bit higher than 10% here. Maybe I'm crazy? Let's see. See what we get out of that. See how much we can actually run this this for without draining everything. I definitely need to work on better power here. Now this one should be done. Yep. So there's another battery. Now is that one and a half seconds or one and a quarter seconds? 
I feel like that's like just over a second, right? Okay, this definitely looks like it's way more than 10% here. This is almost 100%. So for sure, if you're trying to get Chrome instead of electrolyzing Ruby Ore, uh, Ruby Dust and Electrolyzer at 6, so you can get 1. If you use the Universal Macerator, the HV tier, I'm getting almost 1, 100% uh, right here. Draining that, but definitely draining my batteries over here. But it can still run. I'm not running this, am I? No, I'm not running this. All right, so here we go. 32 or was mace rated, and I got 26 chrome. So, yeah. It looks like it would do another one if the second... The second slot, if you saw that, I pulled out the chrome and it started going again. It looked like it was going to crush another one, but I don't know if that's going to waste the, the secondary slot. All right, but anyway, the reason I was doing I need Chrome, the main reason is because I want to start working towards upgrading my electrical blast furnace here. Now, if you noticed, these Cooper Nickel coil blocks in the center have a 1800 uh, Kelvin uh, heating capacity. Now, some of the other ones that I want to be doing, some of the higher tier metals require a higher uh, heating capacity. So this has 2700 Kelvin, it can cook. And then nichrome is 3600, tungsten steel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the way up to here, which is over 9,000. So you think, oh, a nichrome. Maybe I'll just, I'll skip Cantha. I'll go to nichrome. Let's take a look at nichrome. I need to get nichrome ingots, which I'm going to have to get a vacuum freezer for all this stuff. That'll be my next multi-block. How do I get hot nichrome ingots? Oh, that's easy. Just nichrome dust in a blast furnace. I need 2700K. So in order to cook the nichrome, to get the nichrome coils, I'm going to need to get canthal coil blocks. First, and then Canthal is Canthal dust in the blast furnace, and that requires 1800. So, right at the top of this is 1800 Kelvin. So, I'm going to have to upgrade to Canthal, then I'll have to upgrade to Nichrome, and then so on and so forth, all the way up the tiers if I want to keep going up. So this is going to be the next kind of big thing I'm going to be working on. So Canthal is chrome, iron, and aluminum, which is super easy to get these two, but chrome is the issue. But now that I have the HV, it is not going to be an issue. Now to make the 16 coil blocks, you need eight, uh, two times wires, so it's 16 per coil block, and you need 16 coil blocks, so 120 bit. 128 or 256 wires. Uh, I believe that's right. 16 times 16. Yeah, 250. So I need 266 wires, which you get two wires per ingot. So I need 128 uh, Canthal ingots. Get enough wire. So I need 128 ingots, and then the recipe for that, that. So the recipe will do three each. So 128 divided by three is eh, 42 and a bit. So 43. I need to craft this 43 times. So I need 43 chrome. So there is my 43 chrome, and then I can also crush this down again. Like I said, I can even throw it in a thermal centrifuge and get more chrome. But to be honest, this is I'm getting quite a bit of this chrome just from macerating this ruby ore. 
All right, that's just a, a timer I had. So, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get the thermal centrifuge. Um, as of right now, because that's another machine, and it's actually quite intensive on power. It pulls two amps, and I'm going to need to get an MV thermal centrifuge. So I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to try to squeeze out as much chrome as I can out of this yet. Um, but let's get the... What did I say? I needed... 43, so 43 aluminum, and then I'm going to have to throw some more of this in here. Well, let's just... I don't want to use too much of it, because there are... I can make... I use this for stainless steel as well. So 43, 43, and then there's that. And then the canthal dust will go in there. Now the problem with this is I get hot canthal ingots out of this. And I can't cool them yet. So I need to throw this in a vacuum freezer. And the vacuum freezer is, let's see if I can, it is a multi-block. Pretty easy to make. It's just a three by three. The vacuum freezer, and then these frost-proof machine casings. So I need the usual. This looks like it needs output hatch, output bus, input bus, input hatch. So four of those, <clears throat> which are easy to make, and then these frost machine-proof casings, which I need about. 9, 18, 20 ish. Just really quickly guessing. 9 on top, 9. Yeah, 9 on bottom, 9 on top is 18, and then 19, 20. And those are aluminum. Just pure aluminum. So I get 3 per calf, and I need about 20. So I need 7 of these. So I'm going to need. Seven. Not too terrible. I need to do this twice, right? Yeah, I need to craft this seven times. So I need 21 plates, and then I need to do two of these. And this is just, it's actually really not. It's just a whole bunch of aluminum. But the one difficult part of it is the recipe for it. We got gold, we got the electric pumps, and then we have extreme circuits here. So I'm going to have to look into which of these are the easiest to make. These I cannot make because I don't have that yet. Poly. Eh. Fine electrum wire is easy. Small coil, this is easy. This, though, can I do this? I do have polyethylene now. Don't have silicone rubber though. Polyvinyl, how do we get this? Oh, we're starting to go down the rabbit hole here. <laughs> Just air and vinyl chloride, oxygen, vinyl chloride. You probably get a better. And this is made with chlorine and ethylene. Oh, actually, I actually have all this stuff, to be honest. Or oxygen, hydrochloric, ethylene, ethylene. If I don't have chlorine. All right, so that was, which one are we looking at? That one? I can probably make this. I can make that. I have that. I have these epoxy resin sheets. Now this is going to take some time to get used to, or to get some infrastructure for this. This is not the easiest to make. This is going to need epichlorohydrin and bisphenol, or naphtha, nitrogen dioxide. So that is going to be a little bit of an issue. And then the last one, 
It's one, same. I need the plastic circuit boards. Can I make plastic? Oh, this I can do. Sulfuric acid, polyethylene, copper foil. That one's easy. So the extreme, so I would need two of these. I would need two of these though. Anyway, so now I am starting to get into <laughs> trying to figure out how to make this vacuum freezer. Um, I wonder if that is considered a HV that's even going to open up. It might be considered EVH. Um, I'm not sure, but I'll be taking a look at that during episodes. Um, so we did get some stuff going on. That's HVH here. And I have that third. This is probably destroying my power. Yeah, I'm actually not going to put all three in there for now. Um, maybe I will look into getting another HV generator here. Maybe HV diesel generator. I'm not sure how much light fuel it's going to use. Um, but anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I ran along long, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching and have a good one.